good morning everybody and welcome back to Imp of Bee. I hope you like my hat today. I found this in the cupboard in the house and I realised I haven't been wearing it enough. So I'm going to keep it in the van along with my other collection of hats in here. It's very, um, well I bought it at Badminton Horse Trials when I was with my good friend Yvette. We had a great day there and everybody seemed to be wearing these hats with feathers. I'm not quite sure it fits in uh, around here, but I quite like wearing hats. So yeah, I'm wearing it today. It's so lovely. I love coming out here. I did a few videos last year from this location. It's just nice and quiet, nobody around, a few walkers go past. And it's a nice sunny day, so Teddy's decided she wants to sit outside, which is fine by me. But I came here today because I want to make a video about my top five favourite modifications that I've done since having the bongo. I'm going to give some idea of cost. I'm not sure how relevant it's going to be for some of the work that I had done a while ago, especially in light of, I know prices have gone up with the pandemic and the popularity of, of camper vans etc. But it might be helpful if I just give you a rough idea of what the work um, cost me. First thing I'll talk about, of course, is the purchase of my van. I put a deposit down in August of 2014 for this van, um, and I went through a company in Worcester who import them from Japan. So I waited two months before I actually was able to take this van home. And by that time, it had been imported as a tin top, but I paid a bit extra to get a pop top done at that time. And the total I paid for the van, the pop top roof, coolant alarm, and I had new tires fitted, service, etc. The grand total in 2014 was 8,372 which I realise is fairly inexpensive these days, the way prices are, but yes, this was a couple of years ago to say the least. Now for the fun stuff, let's have a look at what I've had done. It's not my favourite modification, but it's something a couple of you have asked about, so I'm going to cover it as part of this. My bike rack. Now, the model I've got suits bongos, and it's the Fiamma Mercedes Vito. I will put a link in the description. I can't quite remember where I paid for it, but I googled it today and they are still available. And I saw them up for £289. It is quite an investment. Um, however, I guess if you cycle a lot, then it just opens up your van for lots more adventures. Definitely a really robust model. It's reasonably easy to use and when I get back later I'm going to ask uh, Richard to give me a hand filming getting a bike on so that you can see it if it's something you're interested in. As I say this has been on our van for well five six years now. Richard fitted it and it was reasonably straightforward I think. Fitting's again a bit rusty now look. We did have to remove, there was a spoiler um, on here, which we've taken off and put these little plugs on. And uh, we've kept the spoiler, it's up in the, uh, in the attic actually. So yeah, that's it with the, uh, this bit down. So it car this one carries two bikes. And um, as I say, I will show you later back home with a bike. The bike rack doesn't interfere with the boot opening. So, um, you don't need to take it on and off that would be a real royal pain so yeah the, the back door is open but if you've got bikes on obviously that's a different matter it's going to be far too heavy when your bikes are on so if you want to raise the the back you'd have to take the bikes off
that is how you attach your bike. Now I want to go ride a bike. Number three, the high top. I've already done a whole video on my high top and the reasons why I chose a high top over the roof I'd chosen previously, which was a pop top. I'll put a link for that in the video. But just uh, an update really on the high top for me. I had it fitted a year ago. I'm super happy with it. It's absolutely brilliant. It's really made day camping much, much easier for me and more practical. I'm standing up here now and I haven't needed to fumble around with straps and clips and pulling roof, uh, roof down. It's also quite blustery today and I'm not worried about that. Whereas with a pop top, it would have flapped around and been quite noisy inside. It's not the most stealth vehicle. Having said that, if I am sleeping overnight somewhere that's not a, a campsite, then it, I feel a bit more stealth in this than I would in a van with a pop top raised. Again, like everything else I'm talking about today, I'm not saying that the way I've got things is the right way and everybody else's is wrong. Far from it. I think everyone does their van the way that suits them. It's really only my opinion, but as some of you have asked for some more information on it, I thought I'd do this video. Now, once again, I know what I paid last year to get the roof done. I did have some extra work done at the same time. I had the side bed, my swivel seat and flooring done. Um, and I've looked today to see if I could find a more up to date price for an equivalent sort of high top conversion. I found it really difficult because most companies ask you to send in an inquiry. So it is really difficult. I can only go on what I've paid. Um, I would expect the price to be around two and a half to three thousand to get a high top fitted but I think that's going to depend on what roof you've got now and all the added extras that you want such as roof vent windows and types of cupboards etc so it's difficult to give an exact price I think if you want to know send in an inquiry to any of the companies that do high tops the big advantages with having extra fitted um, cupboards fitted is just the amount of storage in this area I've got my roof blinds in there I keep a variety of spare clothes, um, rain jacket, walking shoes, etc, warm stuff. And uh, obviously there's a lot more space left in there. Personally, I love the little roof fence. I've got it open today because it's a nice sunny day. Um, and that came with a little blackout blind on there as well. It's great for when you're cooking in the van. And uh, I call that my observatory because I like looking up. Well, you can't really see the stars through it. It's just quite nice having that extra light in the van. Likewise, mine came with these lovely um, windows. I think you've got to pay extra for those now, but I would say if you're gonna go for it, then <laughs> they're well worth the extra. I love my little spy holes and looking out. <laughs> Bear in mind, people can see you as well. <laughs> But uh, yeah, especially first thing in the morning. I love looking out of those windows. The shelves underneath it as well, they're not really shelves, but they are great when you're stopped. Obviously, everything's going to roll around otherwise. But when you're stopped, there's all manner of things that you can keep up here. And uh, yeah, easy to access. And again, I had matching cupboards built this side. These are, I think they're magazine racks, they're called. I keep my coffee... Um, coffee rice and pasta jars up there but obviously you can put whatever you like in there there's a little hole either side of the cupboards where you can fit a, a wine bottle but uh, i've got my bookcase up here now somebody was asking about my bookcase i do love books and i love going away and being able to select a couple of books um i bought these bookends thinking they would hold my books in place. There's one either end there of the books. Unfortunately, I have found when I'm driving, more often than not, they all topple out. So it is a temporary library. When I'm going where I'm going, I set them up there. 
and uh, I just need to work out something I think to go across here to secure them because it's perfect for storing maps and, and all sorts. I've talked about these cupboards plenty but they've got my pots and pans in there and likewise it's honestly having the storage here because I had the rear conversion without these cupboards obviously for, for a couple of years and then I stored things in boxes but just having everything accessible next to where I'm cooking especially in such a small space has really made a, a big big difference to um, trips in the van more storage space up here and matching magazine rack the other side I've stuck this on my kitchen roll holder with a stick and a string not terribly uh, <laughs> it was supposed to be temporary but somehow it's lasted again the difference this has made having this near me when I'm cooking just for mopping and wiping honestly it's so easy rather than fumbling in cupboards for it so yeah so those were all the extras that came um, with the roof that I paid extra for so I guess it'll depend what you have done if you want to go for the high top conversion but yes, as far as I'm concerned, it's been a real advantage. My rear conversion. I had this done around about two years after buying the van. I used it as an eight seater prior to that. So the rear conversion comprised of the units at the back here, two cupboards accessible from this side. Got my groceries in that one. And a cool box, which is our fridge, because fridges are really expensive, the good ones anyway. It's got a two gas burner here. There was an option for a sink, but I decided not to have the sink because I like the extra workspace here. And to be honest, I really didn't want to faff around with water tanks. I'm not sure that it would have been much of a faff, but that's the decision I made then. And then this cupboard here is really good. It's got my kettle in, coffee pot, glasses and mugs, quite a lot of storage. Then there's the electric bits. So 13 amp socket here for when I'm on hookup. And then this little 10 amp, which is where I put my cigarette lighters. I tend to try and have as many things as I can on rechargeable 12 volt these days. So things like phones, cameras, lights, radio, my tablet, all can be recharged on leisure battery here try to find it for the film but i have got one of these little adapters that's got a voltmeter on it so you can actually check the charge of your meter while charging as well but i couldn't find it for filming today sorry about that but it came from amazon and it was less than 10 pounds there's a rail here where the table which came with this conversion fits and although i've had a change around since i had the rear conversion i've had this side bed put in it has changed the way the table goes a little bit so we're a bit more cramped than we were before but it still works and richard and i can sit on these seats here and cook and sit at the table while we're eating no problem at all and again from the outside the rear conversion three cupboards at the back one of which has got all the electrics, the leisure battery. We keep our chocks in there. This is the same as the one that I've shown you inside. It's got the cool box in, but it's quite handy accessing it from the outside. So if you've been to the shop and you've got frozen things, you can put them straight in there. And then this is our garage. So we've got our gas bottle in there, barbecues, all sorts of odds and ends. It's probably quite unusual, but my hookup is in a different place it's under the bonnet a lot of people have their hookup on the sides of their vans in a little cutout section with a flap uh, when mine was done it's in the bonnet so i if i'm on a campsite with hookup i connect the hookup here i can still shut the bonnet down over that 
and it's worked absolutely fine for me so just a peculiarity with my hookup I had my rear conversion done at a company in Swansea uh, the, the company doesn't exist any longer so I wasn't able to get a price from them um, but anyway I rang a company in Swansea also similar um, similar area to where the company I went and I rang them this morning and I asked for a, a sort of a ballpark figure for a rear conversion for a bongo including all the things that I've just shown you the conversion I spoke to this morning the conversion company would fit the hob fridge um, leisure battery hookup point the same cupboards that I've got here and the table and the quote they gave me today was six thousand pounds so that does seem to have gone up quite a lot i'm sure the price varies and i'm sure if you ring around um, you'll get different prices and if you've got some degree of diy you can buy pods to fit yourself and um, and i know a lot of people don't always have the fully fitted versions they're doing a lot of conversions with things from ikea etc the rear conversion has worked really well for me, but I know lots of people who are really, really happy with a side conversion or no conversion. So yeah, it really, really depends. Yes, um, I had a couple of things done all at the same time last year. So along with the high top, I Prior to that, I had a pop top and I had a rear bench, the original Mazda seats rear facing to go with my rear kitchen. Um, I had those taken out when I had the high top done and I had a side bed. Again, there's a link in the description um, here. Uh, I d I've done a whole video on that pull out bed if you're interested. Um, and the, the seat I'm in now, it's the original Mazda Bongo seat. But again, I had that with a little swivel plate put on it, which is really easy to use. It literally takes 60 seconds when you get where you're going to swivel it around. And it's just freed up so much space. I didn't, I couldn't believe it really when I first had it done. I, I kind of thought it was really handy in an extra seat. I just didn't imagine how much bigger the van would feel and when me and Richard are away I think both of us have got plenty of room to sort of spread out and move around the van and kind of not be because we used to sit on the same bench rear facing and uh, there's plenty of room but it's just nice to be able to face each other and have a chat if you want to or face away from each other if you want to read your book or, or whatever it is you're doing but I would definitely recommend the swivel seat and I've looked and that looks as though it's still £270 fitted or you can have it posted to you. When you tot it up, it's almost, I don't want to think about how much I've spent on this van <laughs> besides buying the van, all the, all the extras that I keep doing to it. I'm pleased to say that I think I've come to the end of the major spends unless anything goes wrong touch wood that it doesn't but I know I'm gonna have the maintenance costs ongoing but as far as as modifications I think I'm pretty happy with what I've got and yes I'm glad I've been able to spread out the cost over quite a few years really um, again a big tip or it's more than a tip it's definitely a recommendation if you have any modifications done to your van even relatively minor ones I would definitely let your insurance company know um, I let mine know every time I've done things like the high top etc because I just don't want to get into a situation if heaven forbid I ever do have to claim they'll say well you didn't let us know about that modification so definitely let your insurance company know well I hope this video has been useful for you especially those who've asked for more information on some of the work that I've had done and uh, yeah i hope it's given you some uh, some ideas maybe or if you disagree with anything that i've said put a comment i'll be happy to uh, to respond and that's just another reminder actually please remember to like and subscribe if you like what you see and i do love your comments please comment anything whether you agree with what i say whether you disagree um ideas for future videos um, always lovely to hear and read your comments 
and I respond to all of them. So please carry on. Carry on enjoying your vans. Carry on camping. <laughs> and I'll see you next week. Bye.